So I'm so happy to be here with uh, Professor Mustafa today. This is another interview where we get to know a new senior fellow at Massey College. So, uh, Eba, I'm so happy that you've accepted our invitation to become a senior fellow of Massey College. And I just want to say congratulations <laughs> first. <laughs> and also, so uh, this, the point is of this interview is a little bit for people to get to know you. In a way, uh, because of COVID, we cannot do as many in-person events, so we're trying to compensate a little bit by having this possibility of doing it online. And so for people to, uh, to, to share it and, and get to knew, know you <laughs> a little bit when we finally can come back together. So, uh, so I just want to say, so you're uh, an art historian. Yeah. And, and so why don't you tell us how you got to be, did you always want to be an art historian? <laughs> So first of all, thank you so much. It's such an honor and pleasure to be a senior fellow at Massey. Mm -hmm. And it's very exciting to walk through the doors mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, join this community. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I'm an art historian, specifically an Islamic art historian. Mm -hmm. And uh, my journey to, um, to the field of art history was really something that started in childhood. Mm -hmm. So I grew up between Canada and Egypt mm -hmm. and um, at, a, at a very young age, uh, in Egypt in particular, um, a big part of our upbringing in Egypt is sort of we're surrounded by mm -hmm. these incredible monuments. Yeah. And also Egypt's very heavy with history. Mm -hmm. So in a way I kind of grew up and the most prominent aspect of my landscape was these incredible monuments with mm -hmm. such rich histories. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it, the field of art history got me very young. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, um, I think I became an art historian probably at the age of six, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it, it really was something that I, I absorbed into mm -hmm. my system and into my consciousness. And my parents, um, as you know, immigrants to Canada, mm -hmm. having established a life here, surrounded us with artifacts from home. Mm -hmm. And so in a way, also in our home, we had, um, you know, my father was a collector and mm -hmm. so on. So these combined experiences mm -hmm. Um, just a general propensity in our family to explore mm -hmm. and to learn mm -hmm. and to understand the past mm -hmm. as a way of navigating your present and future. Mm -hmm. That was a big part of my, my story for sure. Mm -hmm. And so then did you start studying art history in university? Or? Um, you know, I used to show visitors <laughs> around as a child and so I was always learning and studying and reading. Um, we also didn't grow up with a lot of television. It was mm -hmm. sort of like a family culture. So I read a lot, mm -hmm. uh, even at a young age. I, it sounds very nerdy, but it's the truth. <laughs> and I guess anyone listening, <laughs> like if you want your child to become an art historian, like surround them with art history it's, books. Yeah. They have their own allure. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, um, as, a, as a, you know, a high school student, mm -hmm. I was just very interested in the arts yeah. and in uh, storytelling and mm -hmm. writing. Um, and I trained as an architect, actually. Oh. So I have a background. I went to an engineering school mm -hmm. that had this incredible uh, sort of confluence of engineering training mm -hmm. and also art and art historical training. Oh. So it was sort of a unique program mm -hmm. in the sense that it had that breadth. Mm -hmm. So I kind of was trained in, in all of these different traditions. So we were, as architects, we're trained as fine artists, but yeah. we're also trained as historians. Oh, yes. So um, that combined experience really positioned me well. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, you know, you're studying architecture in Egypt. Your, <laughs> your classroom is the city, <laughs> yes, right? Yes. So we take our architectural history classes inside the buildings. Oh, yeah. So it's very much, I mean, when we read about your project, it's also about spirituality uh, in the art, the, the role of objects yes. that reveal spirituality. Absolutely. And, uh, did, did that, was that always part of your quest? Or? So, you know, when we hear the word Islamic, we mm -hmm. immediately think religion, mm -hmm. right? And obviously, if you study Islamic architecture or any historical tradition, mm -hmm. religion plays a huge role. Yes. Uh, but one of the ways that I like to approach religion and, and, and spiritual practice is actually, it's just part of the human condition. Mm -hmm. So rituals and relationships mm -hmm. with something that's beyond ourselves, mm -hmm. That is something that is actually agnostic. It's not, you know, in the case of a mosque, it's the relationship is formulated in a way that takes on a religious flavor. Mm -hmm. But you could have those kinds of ritual practices mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. many spaces that today we would consider secular. Mm -hmm. So my interest really is tracking sort of the human condition mm -hmm. and where humans find meaning. Mm -hmm. And that 
Uh, and, and so in that sense, I don't really buy into the religious secular mm -hmm. sort of divides in the mm -hmm. discipline. And I, I track humans. So in that sense, yeah, spirituality is part of it, but it's broader than this. Yeah, it's, it's about it's about humankind yeah, and the sense. human condition. So give sure. me an example of what you're working on. Like, what's a day like uh, in, in oh, your life? Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. So um, it really depends what time of the year you're watching me. <laughs> so as academics, a lot of our, our time and energy goes towards, mm. you know, the educational mis mission. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I really don't see any separation. So whether I'm teaching or whether I'm researching, mm -hmm. I'm almost in the same mode, just mm -hmm. exhibiting one face of the coin or another. Mm -hmm. uh, so I learn and I use my classroom as an opportunity to tell my story mm -hmm. and to learn from my students and also absorb their stories. Mm -hmm. um, and in my research, I'm always thinking about my readers as my students. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they could be 80 or they mm -hmm. could be 15. Mm -hmm. Obviously, one of the big parts of our, uh, of our job is to also experience our, uh, our field sites. So mm -hmm. one of the things that I really enjoy is doing field work. So okay. if you catch me in the summer, I'm probably somewhere in uh, documenting. Mm -hmm. You know, I work in, in many parts of the mm -hmm. Islamic world. Mm -hmm. You know, field work is a luxury and, a, and, and mm -hmm. not something that I can do as often as I'd like. And obviously mm -hmm. with, with oh, the current good. restrictions, it's mm -hmm. been difficult. Um, but um, yes, I absolutely, Egypt's mm -hmm. one of my field sites, but generally the central Islamic lands okay. is where I've, I've done field work. Yeah. And so, so you go and you're studying, you're not doing archaeological digs, do no, you know? You're no, just, you're studying no. a little bit yeah. the objects that, uh, from the Middle Age, I understand. Yeah, That's so, it. so I, um, I don't, I don't excavate, but mm -hmm. obviously because I work on the formative period of Islamic architecture, mm -hmm. which is, you know, it starts in the seventh century, but it has roots in earlier periods. Mm -hmm. And I go as far in my research into the later medieval period around the 12th century. So I cover about 500 years in my research and sometimes farther depending on uh, what I'm studying. Um, so obviously the work of archeologists is very central mm -hmm. to my work. I myself don't excavate, mm -hmm. I don't have that training. But as an architect, I, I uh, live very closely with my, my buildings mm -hmm. and obviously the work of archaeologists is central and key. Mm -hmm. So I will visit excavation sites and I have strong links with uh, ar practicing archaeologists in the mm -hmm. field. And it's something that I hope to strengthen further. So if you're listening, please reach out. <laughs> <laughs> so give me an example of, of uh, a research project or an object that you're... Uh, yeah, you know, okay. So, so, so that's, you know, uh, you know, they're all my children and I kind of <laughs> want to talk about all of them. Um, I work um, like I'll give two very mm -hmm. quick examples. Um, I work on uh, several sites in Jerusalem. So mm -hmm. one of the sites that I've published on and have been very engaged in is a very small pavilion uh, called the Dome of the Chain. Mm -hmm. And it's a pavilion that was constructed by early Muslim patrons mm -hmm. to commemorate King David. Mm -hmm. And it's one of these sites that um, has a very rich history mm -hmm. because it, it's a site of memory. It's mm -hmm. a site that is uh, not only trying to connect Islam to its past mm -hmm. and to its uh, connections with other monotheistic mm -hmm. faith traditions, but it's also one of these monuments that is actually commemorating a future event. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. I'm very, very interested in these small structures that tell like broader, bigger histories. Mm -hmm. The other monument that I work on is based in Cairo, mm -hmm. and it's actually a monument that had a very important function, which was to measure the Nile flood. Oh, yeah. And so it was used for taxation, mm -hmm. but it was also used as like an early warning device mm -hmm. to protect Egypt from and mm -hmm. just generally to gauge the yeah, the water, the rising mm -hmm. uh, flood waters um, for economic purposes, but also mm -hmm. the rate of uh, rise would allow them to intervene on an engineering level. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of maybe my more engineering <laughs> so, side. So, so and and uh, What's next for you? Like, what are you, what's the next big adventure? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're always thinking about future field sites. Mm -hmm. um, you touched on something um, that I am very interested in, is working mm -hmm. more closely with uh, archaeologists and practicing art historians in the Middle East oh, yes. uh, and connecting with those communities. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I have a lot of ties because mm -hmm. I studied there, but that's something that I hope to build on. And it's something that I know at U of T we're very invested in building these community partnerships, but also building partnerships with our local communities mm -hmm. in Canada. Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that I kind of want to bridge that, you know, connecting communities in the Middle East with mm -hmm. communities in Canada 
is I'm, I'm currently, I have, a, I have a wonderful shirt grant, mm -hmm. and I'm working on a project um, that uh, uses computer visualizations and reconstructions oh. of sites mm -hmm. so that we can experience them, but also mm -hmm. use them as artifacts to study and to teach. Mm -hmm. So I'm really interested in the digital humanities, and that's kind of where my architecture background also mm -hmm. comes back in, um, working with students to build and reconstruct some of these monuments. We see these monuments in popular culture, maybe in video games yeah. and things like that. Um, the field of art history has been very interested in them, but it's not something that we've been using as effectively as a tool as we could. Okay. So that's sort of the, maybe the next act for me is going to be involved more closely with that. Oh, yeah. exciting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm very excited. That's wonderful. Well, Massey is very much a place of uh, community building, and so I think we'll, you know, we'll be wanting to hear more about <laughs> your, your projects. And I know we have many people that would be, uh, lots of students here that are in, Art history, and we now have a new partnership with the Aga Khan Museum. Yes, so I know. The, yeah. So the 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 role of objects in Absolutely. in revealing history is, is so interesting. So now we're going to have your buildings <laughs> to, to, to look forward to, to exploring. So, uh, but it's also a place of food. <laughs> you know, this is really a, a place where people come to eat. So uh, you know, so that I can tell the chef, what are your favorite foods? <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> so um, I've lived all over, so I love a very wide variety mm -hmm. of foods. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, the food my mother cooked is probably my favorite. It's the food that I cook. Yeah. Um, so probably Middle Eastern cuisine. Good. <laughs> Good <to know. laughs> so as we uh, uh, embark, what, what are the things that you'd like the people at Massey to know about you? And uh, what do you do for fun outside of your... <laughs> of your That's a great question. Um, so, like, I don't want to be the cliched academic that says, you know, we work so hard, we don't have a lot of time for fun. I don't necessarily endorse or encourage that, but it is sort of true. <laughs> it is true, yeah. <laughs> we work very hard and we wear multiple hats awesome. and, and, and our jobs are also our passion. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of work, um, I'm, I practice Ashtanga yoga and I'm okay. very serious about that. It's a very athletic, energizing form oh. of yoga and I use it to think. Oh. So it's also a ritual practice and I kind of enjoy that aspect of it. Um, I also like designing and making jewelry um, oh, for friends cool. and, so. and loved ones. Uh, and I play the harp. So those are some of the some well, of my that's wonderful. some of my hobbies. Yeah, <laughs> I can see how many people will be uh, uh, intrigued not only by the art historian but also by the harpist and and yeah, uh, it's and the uh, jewelry designer. <laughs> and you know that we have yoga practice here all the time. That's so wonderful. <laughs> that's no, wonderful. I look forward so, to that. I look forward so to that. that. So thank you very much for uh, having this conversation with me. We look forward to having you more often at, at Massey you. and. Please continue to share with us all the great adventures of your career. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. <laughs>